Good afternoon. We're here with Norman Port Horitz. And as those of you know who've been coming to some of these, I tend not to be particularly uh, elaborate or effusive in my introductions. Well, that's too bad. It's too bad. In this, ca in this case, I may make an exception <laughs> because uh, Norman Port Horitz here is, uh, is really a, a, an historic character. Uh, and. Uh, I, I would suspect that, for example, that, uh, that if it hadn't been for, for Norman moving from left to right in the late 60s and the 70s and, and bringing lots of other people with him, uh, Ronald Reagan may not have been elected president, for example. Uh, the Cold War may very possibly not have ended as it did. And there have been so many things over so many years that, uh, that Norman Port Hearts has done that we're very pleased to have him here today. Uh, Let's start with, with, uh, with growing up in, uh, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, Norman Put Hearts 11 days ago celebrated, if that's the right word, his 80th birthday. Yeah, well, uh, a commentary is a, a very unusual phenomenon. It's a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's, it's a, a Jewish, intellectual Jewish monthly, which uh, uh, even from the its uh, uh, founding in 1945 uh, had a mandate to reach far beyond issues of specific, particular Jewish concern into the entire political, cultural environment, context. Um, and it was, although sponsored by a uh, Jewish organization, it was uh, completely independent uh, uh, editorially, uh, so, uh, which is also very unusual because, you know, the old proverb, he who, he who pays the piper calls the tune, was not true in this case. The, uh, the tune was called by the editors and not by the, uh, by the uh, sponsor. Uh, now, it had been a uh, liberal magazine, but see, the trouble is it, it, you can't say these things on one foot. The word liberal in those days meant almost the opposite of what it means today. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it was not, uh, uh, but it was in, by the standards of, uh, before I came along, that is, by the standards of the, founded in 1945, let's say from that period until I became the editor in 1960, um, by the standards of that, that period, it was liberal. And uh, liberal roughly meant the politics of the Kennedy administration, uh, which were, again, the policies of the of President Kennedy were uh, 180 degrees from the policies favored by his brother, Teddy Kennedy. <clears throat> and they were actually much closer to the policies favored by Ronald Reagan 20 years later. In any event, it was a liberal magazine and um, it had a and uh, it had a great deal of prestige and was read far beyond the uh, Jewish community. In fact, it was never very popular within the Jewish community for various reasons. Uh, I was myself then uh, uh, in the late fifties had begun moving to the left from a liberal position. And I was involved in the earliest uh, stirrings of what later got to be called the new left. Commentary was regarded with, uh, with some justification as the, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the intellectual cent one of the main intellectual centers of the new radicalism and, uh, and remained that for, oh, I don't know, up until about 1967. Uh, I became increasingly uh, unhappy with the way that movement, which I had helped to uh, establish, was developing. And what I was mostly unhappy about was the spread of uh, anti-Americanism uh, on the left generally, uh, and in, in the, the new left particularly. It was, uh, 
When I say anti-Americanism, I mean hatred of this country, hostility to this country, uh, uh, the belief that this country if, uh, was, a, uh, was, was uh, a, a source of oppression at home and, uh, and uh, evil abroad. Uh, it was far from being a force for good, it was a force for evil, and only a, a revolution could save it. Uh, even reform would not be enough. Um, he used to spell the name of America with a K. Uh, as, or, so as, or three Ks. Or three Ks, Ku Klux Klan. The one K was Nazi Germany. That was the... Uh, so I, I, you know, even in my most radical phase in the early 60s, and I was pretty radical in, in some respects, uh, I, I did not hate this country. I've always loved this country. And I thought that what we were going to do on the left was perfect it and, and make it, help it realize its noblest aspirations. Uh, well, there was the, the Communist Party slogan in the 1930s, which still had some, you know, communism is 20th century America. Yeah, or, yes, right. Or liberalism in a hurry was yeah. the other slogan. Yeah. I grew disillusioned with the movement I had helped to, uh, to establish and propagate. Um, I began uh, rethinking all the assumptions uh, on which, on the basis of which I had moved left in the first place, and uh, there was no sudden conversion. There was no St. Paul on the road to Damascus conversion. And for me, it was a gradual process of re-examination, and it was very painful. Uh, it ended, it took three or four years, and it ended with my uh, uh, becoming what later got to be known as a neoconservative. And uh, at that point, I was uh, broke with all my, uh, they broke with me, I broke with them, all my old friends, uh, also very painful. I wrote a book called Ex-Friends a few years ago about, about that experience. And um, I, uh, I became a very aggressive proponent of a, of a new point of view, uh, which, uh, I, I, I would have called, if it had been up to me, not neoconservatism, but neo-nationalism, because it was really based on this uh, profound commitment to a new idea about America and about the American role in the world, especially in its conflict with Soviet totalitarianism. And anyway, we, we commentary then pushed very hard for uh, um, it was was the uh, it was the center of a very aggressive polemic against all the ideas and attitudes of the new left, and we were considered nothing short of evil by all my old ex friends. Um, but we, as as uh, Marvin Olasky has generously uh, uh, said, uh, and some other people have uh, also said it. Uh, we did help create uh, a change in the climate of opinion uh, that made it possible for a candidate with the, the views that were held by Ronald Reagan to get elected. I mean, uh, it was not, we didn't you know, c control any votes and we didn't have a very large circulation, but we did, we did do a lot to, uh, to affect the, uh, the, you know, the context, that is the climate of opinion, the ideas in circulation that made, uh, made uh, a, a candidate with, with Reagan's views, uh, first of all, respectable, which they had not been before, intellectually respectable, and secondly, uh, uh, capable of, uh, of uh, overcoming the, uh, the opposition on the left. Uh, and without that, it's, uh, without that, I mean, we weren't the only ones doing this, but uh, without that, it, it's probably true that Reagan would not have been elected and the Cold War would have taken a different uh, different course